Hello, my name is David Philpott. I'm a third year engineering student in the laboratory at Shana Kelly at the University of Toronto. And today I'm here to talk about uh, the 3D printing microfluidic project that we have going on in our lab. Uh, we develop microfluidic devices to be able to sort uh, cells based off of protein expression. And in the first generation of the chip, uh, it, it worked quite well. So one of the projects that we're working on right now is to be able to use 3D printing to be able to uh, increase the amount of chips that we can make and the amount of samples that we can process. So we've been working with CADWORKS 3D to be able to take our current uh, photolithography-based chip design and convert it to a 3D printing uh, high-throughput chip. Our chips were initially created using photolithography. Uh, this required uh, over an entire day in the clean room where you're paying rates of $70 per hour to use the equipment. And we would get about 20 chips uh, over the course of an entire day of work. Um, but now with 3D printing, can we be able to print a chip in only 20 minutes? Um, at quite a uh, lower cost compared to the user fees on the clean room. Uh, this is one of our older uh, chips that have been created using traditional microfabrication techniques. Um, to be able to create it, it takes about three days to be able to create 20 devices. Whereas our new 3D printed chip, um, we can be able to print out in only 20 minutes um, and use the same day that we make it. So one of the projects that I'm doing is using 3D printed microfluidics to be able to create a new design of the chip that takes uh, 16 designs of the previous chip and runs them all in parallel. And this is the outcome of that, um, where we have a 3D printed device with a, a manifold system designed within, such that you have a common inlet for the cell sample and for the outlet populations. They get split into 16 different uh, branches to be able to be sorted within the next generation mix chip. Well, the, the initial device was a success, and it, we were able to use it for an instant application and have the design published. Um, but within the lab, in the, within the lab here in the Kelly Lab, um, we see the potential for commercialization of this technology. One of the things that's required to be able to do partnerships with industry partners is to be able to have a technology that's easily deployable outside your own laboratory. Um, so what the 3D printing, 3D printed version of the mix chip does is allow us to be able to deploy this technology uh, to our partners in the United States and around the world. The learning curve for being able to develop 3D printed microfluidics is not too difficult. Uh, many of the people who are developing microfluidics will have CAD experience, which will help tremendously. We do most of our work in Fusion 360 because you, it's cloud-based and you can share your designs with other people in the lab or with collaborators. Um, but any 3, 3D version of CAD software like AutoCAD or Inventor or SolidWorks, there are some design parameters that you have to follow uh, because not everything that can be designed can actually be printed. But working with CADWORKS 3D, they use their tremendous experience to help you come up with designs that are going to meet your needs.